A wide range of different industries and workplaces contain confined spaces. Amongst these are the oil and gas production and exploration industry, windmill farms and the shipping industry. A confined space is defined as an area that has limited or restricted means of entry or exit, is large enough for a person to enter to perform a certain job, is not designed or configured for human occupancy and potentially implies a significant hazard due to poor or no ventilation. Performing a job under these circumstances involves a higher risk of injuries or illnesses caused by the potential hazardous atmosphere in the confined space and the risk of fire, explosion and trip hazards. It is crucial to ensure a safe entry and maintain safe conditions during the work about to be performed. Before entering a confined space, the potential risk should be determined and some questions need to be answered. Has the area ever been suspected of having a hazardous atmosphere? Are there any indications of acids or harmful liquids? Mechanical and electrical isolation of valves, pipes or remotely operated equipment must be isolated prior to entering the confined space and must be verified either on the work permit, isolation certificate or the entry check sheet. A confined space team consists of the entrance, a standby person and a supervisor. The supervisor's duty is to ensure that each team member holds the required permits to work and are trained for the actual task. To ensure a safe entry into the confined space, the correct equipment, including PPE, air monitoring system and rescue equipment must be used. Before entry, the standby person, who is an authorized gas tester, will perform gas readings. Throughout the operation, the standby person will remain outside to monitor the space and communicate with the entrance. The standby person shall keep focus on the crew working within the confined space and act as a contact person. In case of an emergency, he or she will perform a rescue from outside the space. Before entry, a confined space should be ventilated either by blowing fresh air into the area or extracting air from it. Continuous ventilation throughout the work is essential for the worker's safety. If it is not possible to establish continuous ventilation, the entrance must wear self-contained breathing apparatus. Prior to a confined space entry, the tank, void or similar area must be tested for toxic and explosive atmospheres this is performed at all levels possible to test the presence of both light and heavy gases. Lighter gases such as natural gas, CH4 and ammonia will be measured in the top layer and heavier gases like H2S, CO2 and SO2 are normally present in the middle and bottom layers of the area. The entrant is a worker at the highest risk and must be aware of the hazards involved when entering a confined space as well as being qualified in the use of the safety equipment. It is essential that the entrants are trained in confined space procedures, both related to entering and exiting the confined space, and emergency rescue procedures. During the work within the confined space, it is vital that the entrants and the standby persons communicate within a fixed interval. Upon finalizing the work within the confined space, the workers must ensure that the area is returned to its original order and remove all equipment in the area and return the safety systems to normal operational status. The equipment and tools used to perform the job should be cleaned and inspected once the job is completed. Summing up the key learnings. Before entrance, determine the potential dangers and hazards. 
equipment checks take place before, during and after a confined space job. It is essential that the team members are trained in confined space entry procedures.